Today we're covering the muscles of the hands, of course with a little help from our friends Nintendo and bread. Just, just bread. As always, our goal at Memorize Medical is to take about an hour's worth of studying and knock it out in just a couple minutes. So let's get to it. Taking a closer look at the hand, there are three main areas of muscles. The first area is the thenar eminence, basically this big padded muscle directly underneath your thumb. Secondly, we have the hypothenar eminence, which is the padded muscle found directly under your fifth digit or your pinky finger. And finally, we have the muscles found in the middle of the hand, dealing and based around the metacarpals. Now, each of these three areas actually has three different muscles or muscle groups in them. An easy way to remember this, if you're a Nintendo fan, is just to imagine you slapping a Triforce right in the middle of your palm. That'll remind you of the three different areas and the three muscles you'll find in each area. Now there is one extra muscle that doesn't technically fit into any of these compartments. So really we can think about it as a Triforce plus one, but we'll cover that later. For now, let's check out the muscles of the thenar and hypothenar eminences. The good news here is that these areas basically have the same kind of muscles, just with slightly different names. On each side, you'll find a flexor that's closer to the fingers. You'll find an abductor muscle that's closer to the edge of the hand. And then you'll find an opponent's muscle that runs underneath the other two. Now the easiest way to remember all the muscles of the two different eminences is with the mnemonic one for all and all for one. So for example, one for all could stand for the opponent's pollicis, the flexor pollicis brevis, and the abductor pollicis brevis. All for one could stand for the abductor digiti minimi, the flexor digiti minimi brevis, and the opponent's digiti minimi. So obviously the order isn't too important here, but it'll just remind you of the six muscles you'll find in these two different areas. Now we can get into the middle of the hand. So again, there are three groups of muscles in the middle of the hand, and the most superficial we come to is the adductor pollicis. So this muscle is a two-headed triangular shaped muscle that originates off the metacarpals and inserts on the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Most muscles of the hand insert on a proximal phalanx, so this is just one of them. Next up, we have the lumbricals, which is actually Latin for worms. Gross. And actually these wormy muscles are kind of interesting because they're one of the few muscles that originate off the tendons of another muscle instead of a bone. So they originate off the tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. But this is exactly what I'm saying. It's like, how are you gonna originate off my tendon? You know, it's my tendon. Like, find a bone like everyone else. I know, it's, I, it is ridiculous. It's like, they call them worms? No, these muscles are leeches, leeches. They're not here, right? They're not here? Oh, okay, good. So to remember the flexor digitorum profundus, just remember if you dig deep, you'll find worms, AKA the lumbricals. So to give you a little better idea of how the lumbricals work, I have a very, very crude model here for you. So in blue here, this will represent the flexor digitorum profundus tendon. In red here, we have the lumbrical. It arises and originates off that tendon. It then runs laterally near the proximal phalanx and inserts on the extensor hood. So it does not insert on the proximal phalanx, it just inserts around that area on the extensor hood solely. So what it also does, the rest of the fingers also get a lumbrical, so this finger will have a lumbrical inserting there, another one inserts there, another one inserts there. So when they contract, if you can imagine, it's pulling, it ends up flexing this MCP joint, the first knuckle, but at the same time, it pulls taut the rest of the extensor hood that runs down the finger. So what ends up happening is you flex the MCP joint, but then you extend the PIP joint and the DIP joint. So if all four fingers do that at the same time, you end up in this kind of weird hand position. And this would be referred to as a lumbrical grip. It kind of looks like a sideways L. So for their lumbricals, things you can remember is that, think of the L in lumbrical, reminding you that it runs laterally and inserts on the extensor hood and it also creates that kind of sideways L-shaped grip. Our last group of muscles is the interossi and there's actually two different types. We have the palmar interossi and the dorsal interossi. Of course, interossi in this case is just Latin for between the bones and that's where you'll find these muscles between the metacarpals. So they originate off the metacarpals and then run distally and insert on the extensor hoods and the proximal phalanxes of the digits. Since they insert on the extensor hoods, just like the lumbricals, they can do what the lumbricals can do and help create that lumbrical grip. Since they insert on the proximal phalanxes, however, 
What they're most known for doing is abducting and adducting the fingers. An easy way to remember what each one does is with the mnemonic pads and dabs. So the palmar interossi, the P there, adducts the fingers, while the dorsal interossi, the D, adducts the fingers. So that covers our entire Triforce. We saved Hyrule, we defeated Ganon, we're doing great, but we have to remember our Triforce plus one. So the plus one there, of course, is the Palmaris Brevis. This is a very small, very superficial muscle that doesn't technically fit into any of our other compartments. So it originates off the palmar epineurosis of the palm and then inserts uh, very superficially into the skin. So what they think it does is it contracts and kind of pulls this uh, hypothenar over a little bit, the skin at least, and kind of helps with gripping things. They think it might help with uh, protecting the ulnar nerve if you're kind of hammering things so it doesn't get uh, jangled around or kind of disrupted too much. But really no one knows what it does and you'll probably never see it or never notice it's there. But hey, remember it forever. All right, so let's close things out with one quick mnemonic to remember the innervations. So the vast majority of muscles in the hand are innervated by the ulnar nerve. So this is, this is basically ulnar territory. But there are four muscles that are innervated by the median nerve. And the easy way to remember that is with the mnemonic half, loaf, half. So the half L there stands for half of the lumbricals. So the lateral two lumbricals are all median nerve. Then we have the opponent's pollicis, the abductor pollicis brevis, and then half of the flexor pollicis brevis. So the flexor pollicis brevis has two heads. One gets the ulnar nerve and one gets the median nerve. So basically if you're summarizing it, the median nerve is kind of this side of the lumbricals and then most of the thenar eminence. So just remember, half, loaf, half. And that covers the hand. So next up, we're gonna move into the lower extremity. So be sure to stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching. And of course, good luck on your next test.